A standard thermometer goes up to 100 degrees Celsius or about 212 degrees Fahrenheit. But when you're baking those Christmas cookies and holiday desserts, you probably need to get your oven to around 350 or 400 degrees. So how does your oven do that? And how can you trust that temperature? Well, that's where thermocouples come into the picture. And here's Dr. Timothy Plett with Bakersfield College to explain. It is two pieces of wire that are different kinds of metal that are joined together at a common point. Now, why is that interesting? And how is that supposed to relate at all to temperature? Well, it has to do with something called the Seebeck effect, named after the scientist who discovered it. And what Seebeck discovered is when he connected two wires of two different metals and then measured the electric potential or the voltage across them, he discovered that indeed they did produce a voltage. And what's more interesting is that when you change the temperature at the junction between them, when you change that temperature, the value of the voltage changes. So now what we should expect to see is that if we take the two ends of this, clip them together, and then stick them in two different temperature sources, we should see that this uh, voltage will change. Uh, so put this in. We again see the effect. We put it to the cold. You see the effect goes away and even goes the opposite direction. Now, a standard thermocouple will produce much higher voltages than this because they have chosen materials specific to this purpose. But even though this is a pretty simple, unideal demo, we can indeed see that the effect works. And with more careful data taking, we could indeed make that kind of low high graph that we talked about and then use that to actually determine what temperature we are at when we are using our ovens and perhaps measuring uh, temperature using a meat thermometer or something like that. Now to show this full episode to your students for free, just head over to the Science Sundays section of our website, turnit23.com. There you will also find some links for step-by-step -step tutorials to recreate this experiment at home with your students. We'll see you next week.